to miss. So grab your popcorn, cup of tea, whatever snack that you like, because this story is going to keep you on the edge of your seat, I promise. Our guest Chichi is going to take us on a journey through the world of online romance and deception in her story, How I Survived a WhatsApp Love Scammer. So if you're into online dating or just curious about staying safe while meeting people online, then keep listening because Chichi's story is filled with lessons that can keep you safe online. For those of you that are, you know, online trying to find love, this is definitely your story. But before we dive into her story, I want to extend our gratitude to our sponsor, Digital Marketing for Less.com, for making this episode possible. So sit back, relax, and prepare to glean wisdom from Chichi's experience as we dive into the darker side of online dating right here on K Rose TV Network. So let's get started. Chichi, thank you so much for joining us today. How are you? Uh I am doing amazing and thank you so much for having me. I am excited to share my story and hopefully it's going to help somebody um, make the right choices and empower women and uh, men as well. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much. So can you start by telling us a little bit about yourself? Well, my name is Chichi uh, Nachilima. I was raised in, um, I was born and raised in Zambia, and I am a single uh, mom of one, a mom to an amazing son. He is 12, about to be 13. Uh, he's such a joy in uh, my world. So when it comes to dating, I always think about him because every decision that I make affects my son and uh, I come from a big family oh my god um, 10 children two boys and eight girls so you can imagine the the stuff that we went through as girls you know um, but I come from an amazing family and grateful to be part of my family Thank you. So uh, thank you so much, Chichi, honestly, for sharing that glimpse into your background, your family, and just a little bit more about yourself so that our audience can, you know, have a clear picture of who Chichi is. So now let's dive into your story. How did you meet this guy from Zambia? I mean, what initially drew you to him? Oh, my God. Where do I even begin so I met this guy through a mutual friend. And of course, it was long distance um, here in California. He was in Zambia. So um, the one thing that brought us together was um, the connection that we had in our shared space and our personalities seemed to just mash well. Uh, he was somebody that would make me laugh. Uh, if I needed encouragement, he was there to encourage. I would wake up in the morning. I'm waking up to a prayer that was just like out of this world. I have never experienced that before. And um, I've never had a man send me a prayer every morning. So that was that was unique. And um, as as a Christian woman, uh, that's something that's important to me. So I was looking for somebody that, you know, we share the same values, the same um, core values when it comes to where we stand spiritually, because I've been with somebody that was not strong in the word of God. So I've experienced what that relationship looks like. And I was looking for something different where we have God as the center of our relationship. So, um, it, yeah, so it was through a mutual friend and, you know, um, the messages, the prayers, the phone calls, mm -hmm. I just felt like he truly, truly cared about me. He was interested in who I was. He, mm -hmm. you know, distance didn't really matter. Um, 
I shared with a few friends of mine and, you know, they're just like, you know, but he's way out there. How do you know that you can trust him? But mm-hmm. I, I, I just had this piece about this guy and um, we talked every day when he wakes up, I'm about to go to bed. When I wake up, he's getting off work. So we talked, it, it felt like we talked every single time and I felt connected in that moment and um you know communication is important to me and that's something that drew me even closer that made me so interested in getting to know this person because you know he was a good communicator he was good at being consistent which is what we all are looking for consistency Uh uh-huh uh-huh Wow, that sounds like a promising start. I can imagine waking up to prayers. Oh my God, talking every day. I mean, that's what every woman craves. You know, you want a guy who overly communicates. I like you, I missed you, good morning, all those nice things. So, I mean, when did you start noticing that things were not as they seemed? I mean, you're receiving these prayers. The guy is calling you every day. When did you just start saying no? Come on, I think there's something wrong going on here. Oh, well, uh, that was after we exchanged a few messages. You know, when you're talking to somebody, trying to get to know somebody, you you share what's important to you, what you're looking for. And I feel like where I'm at in my life right now, I'm looking for something uh, serious. I don't have time to play games when it comes to dating I want to know what you're looking for I want to know where you see yourself in a year Mm -hmm. um are you looking to settle down are you looking to have more children if you answer no to all that I'm not gonna give you time or day of my life but Mm -hmm. this guy checked all the boxes that's what he wanted he wanted to start a family he was ready to settle down and um the states was nothing he you know he said he could travel he could relocate so I was like you know what I like how he's open-minded and he uh, started sharing his um, visions and business plans and just what he wanted to do before he met me mm-hmm. and um, he had several business ventures that he wanted to accomplish and um in the beginning, he said he had all the fundings secured. He was, he had a piece of land that his grandparents left and uh, he shared what he was going to do with that land. And he was trying to start up another business in the area where he used to live. So I was like, wow, that's promising. Like, you know, a man that is hardworking, that, ha- that is goal oriented, who wouldn't want a man like that? I was like, you know what? You've checked all the boxes. You're Christian, right. hardworking, mm-hmm. uh, just every woman's dream because you want a man that has a vision because if there's no vision, then you really have nothing, honestly. So um, after that, the story started changing because now I was interested in mm-hmm. finding out like, when are you starting this? So what's next? Right. And um, I I did a bit of contract at work. So it's like, oh, you know, I could even envision myself helping with the business. Uh-huh. And um, suddenly the story started changing. And it was like, oh, you know, the plans I was telling you, um, I'm going to need some help with finances because um, the money that I had, something came up I used it up I was like okay it was not just adding up I'm like one minute you're telling me you have the money the next Mm -hmm. minute you're sharing you don't have the money which one is it so I I started doubting what he was telling me because if you're telling me one thing and then tomorrow you share a different story then there's something going on And remember, this was after I had watched Tender Swindler. So you can imagine. (laughs) Oh, my God. It it must have been so amazing to actually navigate. (laughs) Oh, yes. 
my radar was just high up because I watched that show and with him talking to him I didn't see any of those signs mm-hmm. until when the story started changing but I like to give people a benefit of doubt so I I had to be creative in the way I approached this because I was reminded of um, the scripture in Genesis you know, when God created Adam, Mm -hmm. Adam was not waiting for Eve to go work the land and bring the money to Adam. Mm -hmm. Adam had everything before Eve was created. That's true. Adam was already working. Adam had things lined up. So when he started doing that, I was like, hold up. This is so backward. But I'm going to give you a benefit of doubt that whatever problems you're telling me are actually legit. And um, I was just in that place of how do I approach this situation? What is the best way? Because if you outright confront somebody, they might start behaving the way they think you want them to behave so I was like you know what I'm gonna let you expose yourself I'm gonna let you show me who you truly are before I can you know have that judgmental conclusion or make that conclusion that you are deceiving me so I gave him a benefit of doubt Wow, deception is certainly a challenging experience to go through. I mean, and okay, I know all these things are happening. The guy is telling you he wants to buy land, he wants to start a business, and now he's asking you for money. Did you actually, were you already in love with this guy? And uh, if yes or no, I mean, how did you handle the situation of you? Of course, you know, like you said, he checked all the boxes somebody who wanted to settle down, he wanted to get married. And now you're beginning to have all these confusing mixed feelings. Like you're not sure anymore whether this guy is truly pursuing love or pursuing something else. You know, how did you handle the situation when you started discovering what lessons did you learn from that uh, you can share with our audience? Well, I will say I was falling in love. And the one thing I'll say that was more of a saving grace for me was that, you know, when you go through different experiences, you learn and you grow. Mm-hmm. And in this situation, I... I was not just diving in with my heart. I was also using my her- my head. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I would pump the brakes and kind of like analyze the situation and try and see what am I missing? What did I miss from the get-go? Mm-hmm. Like, was he trying to overcompensate with knowing that you know, um, I'm a Christian woman, I'm a single mom, I want to get married, I want to be in a relationship. Did he think that I was so desperate to do anything uh, for him in that moment? You know, uh, it was a difficult period, Mm -hmm. but I knew I had to confront him for me to have that peace. Because Mm -hmm. me just pushing it off and um, not dealing with a situation was not the woman that I was, you know, in that moment. The Mm -hmm. Chi Chi back in the, you know, late 20s, early 30s would have just swept it under the rug and just, you know, made excuses for him. Like, oh, Mm -hmm. uh, he really has a problem. He genuinely needs my help. And I would have been that one person to help him because, I love helping people. I that's something that I know about myself and I feel like after the relationships I've been through and what I've learned from that was that 
if something doesn't sit right with me, I have to confront you. I have to voice out. I have to say what's on my mind. Mm -hmm. And I confronted him about the inconsistencies. And at first, he tried to deny the situation, the fact that he was caught red-handed. And later, he did admit uh, to his deceptive scheme. And uh, honestly, I had to rely on the Holy Spirit because in every relationship I've been in, God has always revealed the character of the person up front. So it's always up to us to be obedient to what the Holy Spirit is revealing to us Mm -hmm. and what we're feeling in that moment. I feel like as women, God gave us the gift of intuition or discernment. Mm -hmm. We are gifted in such a way that when we feel a certain way and we go against it, we find out later on that what I was feeling was the decision I needed to act on. Mm -hmm. But uh, with him, I had to really rely on the Holy Spirit and uh, the intuition. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was able to just, you know, be vocal about it. And thankfully, he ended up confronting what he was trying to do. He he actually admitted that he wanted to get money out of me because even coming to the States, he, he told me he didn't have the funds to get his way, his ticket to the States. He was banking on me buying him the ticket Uh, If we had to get married, he was hoping that when he comes to the States, I'll be responsible for him. And Mm -hmm. uh, just in short, I think he he was looking for a sugar mommy situation. And honestly, I am I am no sugar mommy. I I already have a child. So. (laughs) <laughs> a sugar mommy ready. situation because I believe that's what's common now in Zambia. I've spoken to a couple of friends uh that are currently in Zambia and I've been told that most of these young guys in Zambia they're actually looking for women that are financially stable so they don't have to work, they can be stay home dads. And so maybe he was like, Wow, Chichi is in America. I can be a stay-at-home dad. She's going to buy me a ticket. And I'm sure there are women that are actually doing that. Uh, I agree. Yeah, yeah. So it's a powerful realization that you quickly realize what this guy was after. And you took a couple steps back instead of moving forward with the relationship. So if I may ask you, how much exactly did he ask for? Did he actually say, I want $1,000, Honestly, or he just wanted really, money in general? He wanted money, and the business venture he was trying to embark was not going to be worth $500. So you know we are talking over a couple of thousand dollars. Mm. And, um, yeah, I forgot. Actually, there was a time he even called me. He was complaining about um, not having enough money for rent, not being paid this one month. I was like, look, I'm going to pray for you that God provides. Because this was after I had realized that this guy has done this before. And um, he was trying to see what he can get away with me. And if you've noticed, if people have done something in the past and it was successful, they will try again and see if they will be successful again. And it becomes a little business scheme that they run just to generate extra income and they want to live this luxurious lifestyle that they cannot afford because they're relying on other people to fund their living lifestyle. So when he started asking me for money because he didn't have uh, enough money to pay for rent, 
And I, w- I was like, okay, something is not right. Because as a woman, you should be the one asking me if, if I have everything covered for this month or next month, do I need any help? But if you're the one coming to me with help constantly, it actually raises red flags. And Mm -hmm. most people don't realize that. They feel like, oh, you know, he's asking for help. I should help him. But to what extent, to what point, when do you draw the line? Yes, I'm I'm not against helping, but I've also learned to let the Holy Spirit lead me when to give and when not to give. If I'm not moved to help, I'm not going to do it. But usually when the Holy Spirit prompts me to bless somebody, I always get something back. And, you know, there's, there's just that urge that you feel like you have to do it. And when you don't do it, you just, you feel a certain way. You feel bad about not doing what you were asked to do in that moment. So with him, honestly, I never had that urge to send him money. But, you know, I was even surprised at myself when I said, I'll pray for you, that God will make a way. And usually there are people that I've spoken to and don't even know them. And I'm just compelled to help them. So In this situation, I think God had a lesson for me and he wanted me to see, I I believe, how much I've grown. Because sometimes you you question yourself, am I doing this dating thing right? Am I even, you know, do I have all the right tools in place to be successful at dating? And honestly uh in this situation with this guy it was one of those moments for me where I realized even though it was painful you know um nobody wants to be disappointed nobody wants to be hurt especially if you're beginning to fall in love with somebody you're you're um envisioning yourself with this person and you talk about the future um and they're asking about your son like it was their son. It just, you know, as a single mom, you're just like, oh, my God, wow. Where has this person been hiding? Right. Um, so, but honestly, the most important thing that I learned from this experience was to value my own worth and, you know, not let anybody take advantage of uh, my kindness or, you know, me as a person. Um, I'm the only person that can protect myself. And as a woman, I've been blessed with the gift of choosing who's right for me. And it's okay to just, you know, if you don't see anything going beyond high, high, it's okay to just, you know, bless them and release them and wait for the next person. Wow. What a love story. So what advice would you give to others who might find themselves in a similar situation? Uh, My advice would be, you know, always, always, always uh, trust your instincts and, um, you know, be mindful of uh, red flags that you're seeing. If you're seeing them uh, from the get-go, confront that person and sometimes you don't even need to confront the person um you can just you know block and delete them or keep it going or just let them know that you know you're not interested because you guys don't share the same values um you know and also uh taking time to get to know the person uh, if you're in the same uh area the same neighborhood the same township it's important to verify that information with people that know him, ask them about his character, his personality. And I think the most, in question, the most important question for me uh, lately has been um, getting to know somebody's upbringing because it tells you a lot as, as a woman or as a man. Um, you find out a lot how that person grew up, you know. Um, it, it may 
kind of like bring you into their world a little bit. It may expose things that they grew up with or, you know, the traumas that they were exposed to. So uh, that is important. And it's also important to uh, seek uh, wise counsel and surround yourself with good, healthy friends in general um, that are always pouring into you and not just taking from you, uh, depleting you. You want people that will help you be a bit a better person. And um, also keep in mind, not every Christian brother makes a good husband. You know, others are just meant to be brothers in the Lord that you just share scripture with, pray with, and just leave it at that. Um, you know, your well-being is, worth protecting with everything that you got uh god created us special in our own way and there's that special somebody for all of us you know we're all praying for a bohas oh i want bohas i want bohas but this is a moment for us as single women single men to work on ourselves and to also discover who we are and what are we bringing to the table before this person comes into our lives. And um, as, as a single mom, it's important for me to vet that person thoroughly because I don't want to introduce just anybody to my son. And that's the last thing that I do. I don't expose my son to people that I'm dating unless I know for a fact that we the, the end road is getting to the altar and then redo the dating scene again all over again because marriage is not the end um, goal you know it's just another season another beginning of something beautiful so my advice is be patient wait on the lord uh, I know nobody wants to hear that. I don't want to hear it as well. But uh, sometimes I have to remind myself that God's timing is always the best. And uh, while I'm waiting, I'm enjoying life, um, having fun with my friends. When I have time, see family, uh, spend time with my son. So ladies and gents, go out, enjoy your life, have fun while you're waiting. And don't try and force things that you know are not good for you. You just don't want to walk down the aisle in a white dress and be miserable for the rest of your life. Thank you so much, Chi Chi, for sharing your story. I pray that the Lord will bless you with a man that deserves your love. I know the Bible says it is God who said it is not good for man to be alone. So I believe that God is going to send a great man your way very, very soon. And to our listeners, how do you stay safe while meeting people online? Please share your tips in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. And again, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Navigating Relationships with Wisdom on K-Rose TV Network. Stay tuned for more inspiring stories. And please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Sharing is caring. And a big shout out to our sponsor, digitalmarketingforless.com for their support in bringing you this episode. Take care, all, and God bless you again, Chi Chi. Thank you so much for being a wonderful guest on this show. Take care, and God bless you. Thank you so much for having me, Kay. I hope this story can help others navigate, you know, similar challenging uh, dating situations. I truly appreciate the opportunity. You're welcome, and thank you so much.